The management of prostate cancer has changed over the years. We're more inclined to do what's called watch and wait than we were a number of years ago when we thought we needed to get every cancer out if there was a cancer there because we didn't want to take the risk of developing metastatic disease and dying from it. But what we found is that the more benign or the less aggressive cancers in, in the case of prostate cancer, uh, you can watch and wait fairly reliably as long as you know what you're doing. There are a lot of ways to follow that give you a good idea of how extensive the cancer is and how fast it's growing. And we do it that way, what we become interested in is how do we manage these cancers the most effective way so that they aren't so inclined to progress and cause metastatic disease, which of course can be lethal. And there was an article published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrine Metabolism in May of 2012 that talks about the use of vitamin D3 supplementation to treat these kinds of cancers that are not aggressive. They're called Gleason 6 prostate cancers. And in general, the standard treatment that used to be used, surgery, radiation, hormonal therapy, and sometimes chemotherapy, has its downside to it. And that's what we're trying to avoid. And if we can, because these cancers are very slow growing, avoid them for 20 or 30 years, you'll die from something else, not your prostate cancer. Well, what they found in this particular study is that if you give these people who have Gleason 6 prostate cancers 4,000 IUs uh, for a year of vitamin D3, that the PSA dropped, or excuse me, the PSA wouldn't drop, but the aggressiveness of the cancer would drop in 55% of the cases. And in 11% of the cases, there was no change. And in about 34%, there was somewhat of a worsening. So it looks like there's a substantial benefit in most people to take vitamin D3 in that setting. And of course, what vitamin D3 can do in that setting is increase what's called differentiation of cancer cells, which means these cancer cells that have very abnormal metabolism to them, that have this growth that's uncontrollable, can be shifted more towards less of that tendency. That's what differentiation is called. And we know that men who have vitamin D levels less than 20 nanograms per milliliter have a very strong correlation with death rate. So it's interesting that this study showed what it did, and it suggests that for some men, particularly those with low vitamin D levels, that it could be very valuable to add vitamin D supplementation to their overall protocol. But as in, it, but as in every uh, situation, you want to look at all the parameters, look at each case individually before you decide whether or not this is the right thing for your patient. The other things that we can do that help with uh, these Gleason 6 prostate cancers is look at our lifestyle. Do the things that keep us healthy. We know that we can change the way DNA expresses itself. The gene expression in prostate cancer is very, very uh, susceptible and in a positive way. If we eat right, reduce our stress levels, exercise every day to detox, get enough sleep, don't weigh too much, and don't expose ourselves to toxic exposures. These studies have been done and show a dramatic change in what happens to the cancer genes, those oncogenes, and how they express themselves if we have a healthy lifestyle. Other things you can add to prostate cancer that's a Gleason 6 are things like pectisol, which is modified citrus pectin, mushrooms that are boosting the immune system and the natural killer cells, antioxidants, vitamin C and vitamin K. And remember that these studies have been done that show that these things can be of value. So in summary, if you have prostate cancer that's a Gleason 6 and you don't want surgery, vitamin D and these other lifestyle approaches and these other nutritional approaches that can support your cancer from being so aggressive are the thing you might want to consider.